G'day people, I'm Sharon, welcome to my channel. A friend has asked me to make a couple of bags for a little person who's starting school in the new year. I'm starting with the library bag and whilst I've embroidered a name on it, you can certainly make it without doing embroidery on it. My big thought with this was, this child is going to be using the same bag probably for about seven years with going to the library right from pre-primary level through to year six. So I want to make something that is not going to be too old for somebody who's just starting school, nor something that's too babyish for someone who's heading into high school. And uh, my solution, this bag is completely reversible. I can choose different fabrics that can be appropriate at each stage of her life. I have two pieces of fabric, 15 and a half inches wide by 30 inches long. They're both the same size and I've got two pieces because one is going to be the lining and one is going to be the outside. The size of library bags for children is not a very exact science. I did look on the internet, there were a number available and they were all different sizes. The Measurements I've given you are the ones that I spoke to the librarian at my local school and asked around about what would work. Of course, if you make the bags too big, the books can get damaged by wobbling around in them. And if you make the bags too small, they can't fit things in. So this one I think is probably a fairly happy medium. For the handle, I've cut a piece of one of those fabrics at four inches by 14, which is around about 10 by 45 in centimeters, and one that's one inch wide, so a quarter of the width of that, same length pretty much. I always prefer my handles to have at least a little bit of wadding in them. They're just nicer to hold on to. To do that, take it, halve it, and press it, and then press those sides into the center line and all together. And I'm going to put this piece of wadding inside here and it gets folded into the whole handle and it just makes the handle a little bit nicer to hold because it's got that little bit of wadding inside it. Now it's just a matter of stitching down each long side of that handle about an eighth of an inch from the edge. I have already made a video about how to put a pocket inside a bag. If you want to do it, now is the time before you start assembling the bag. Once my handle is sewn, I'm going to cut it in half. I'm just going to take those ends off as well. They don't have to be a particular size, they both have to be the same size. I don't want to make them too long because a child carrying a bag, if the bag is too big, the bag will be dragging on the ground. So it's actually more important to me to make these handles short enough so that they don't add too much length to the bag. The other thing you do want to make sure is that your handles are central. So find the center of the top of each side of the bag. And if I put that mark there on the line, and it's on that thicker line, I can now add one of these handles. I will personally add it with the seam where the two bits came together on the inside. And there would be good. But I need these handles. I want them to extend a bit past there. So I'm going to move my fabric up and I will pin them with about a half an inch overhang. 
Why am I doing that? Because I really want to make sure these are firmly in the bag. That's the bit that's going to be under the most pressure. As the bag is used, the handles. So I'm going to do extra sewing to make sure that they're firmly into the bag. It doesn't matter that that's not wanting to sit flat at the moment. I'm going to sew these about a quarter of an inch away from the edge and I'm going to sew them a couple of times. With my handles firmly attached here, I stitched them twice there and twice there about a quarter of an inch away from the edge. I've still got these pinned down nice and flat because I'm now going to add my lining. If you were going to put a pocket on your lining, do it before you do this bit. It's much easier to put it on when this is flat and not attached to anything. So now this can be attached along here and it is just a straight stitch joining the pieces together. I don't normally pin these things. I know a lot of you will want to. Um, and it's just a straight stitch across here. And I'm probably going to do it with about a half an inch seam allowance. One centimetre. That will do fine. I want it to be nicely stitched all the way across there. That is sewn together. You can see it in there. The handles are firmly in place. Now I have to turn it into a bag. I'm going to fold these together so that I've got all of the outside fabric on one side and all of the inside fabric on the other. Where these come together I'm going to take it from that to that and make sure they're nice and firmly together. When I come to sew this up, if I've got them so that I come to the top one first and the one that's folding away underneath, so I'll be sewing that way, they will pull themselves in closer and be very firmly together. As I sew this side of the bag, I'm going to leave a gap in the stitching because I want to be able to pull it through to the right way out. However, I'm not going to leave a gap as in not sewing it at all. I'm going to leave a gap as in I'm going to sew part of the green bit and then I'm going to do a little back stitch and then I'm going to sew a few inches with the longest stitch my machine can do. And then I'm going to do back to normal size sewing, a little bit forward, a little bit back and carry on to the end. That part where I've sewn it with the biggest size stitch my machine can do, that's going to be easy for me to take out. And it's also going to allow me to press that seam so that I have nice edges on the opening. And then I press them open. And the reason I have done that is that now in the bits where I made it a really long stitch, I can undo that bit. And those nicely pressed seams, when they're taken out, they're nice and easy for me to do the hand stitching at the end. I'm now going to do just stitching the entire side on this side. Once again, I'll put the one that's underneath will go backwards and the one that's on top forwards. That will help to make that a better neater join and then I'll just stitch the entire side down. Here is the area where I did the long stitches. And I'm just going to unpick about every third one. 
which doesn't take long to do. And usually with a stitch this long, if you unpick every third one and then go to the other side, it just pulls out. So it's not a very difficult thing to do. But because I pressed it and pressed that nicely open, that's the part where I'm now going to open my bag or pull my bag through. And as I do this, I'm going to take this corner, put a thumb in there and fold that around. And that gives me a nice corner there. And I can do the same with this one. Thumb and a finger together and pull out my corner. It's much easier to get your corners nice at this point. Keep pulling it through. Pushing it through that hole. When I'm getting up towards these ones, I want to do the same thing again. Find my way into that the corners. Fold it over. One thumb and a finger and pull that through. There's a nice corner there. Let's see if I can get hold of the last one. Sometimes it becomes more of a fishing expedition to work out where they are. In fact, I might not be able to get it. Let's see if I can make this one pop out nicely. Because I haven't cut off those corners, these bits should just turn out and be quite... Quite firm. I think I've got them through the wrong side of the handles. And, and there's the bit that I've just pulled it all through. But hopefully that should be reasonably easy for me to do a little bit of a ladder stitch through there. And finish that bit off. If I really wanted to, I could actually stitch that by machine. I'm not going to, I'll hand stitch it. But the only other thing left to do is push the lining inside the bag. And once I've done that, I'm going to top stitch around that top edge and that is one further part of the sewing that helps to keep those handles really really firm. This is what I mean by a ladder stitch. So I am stitching from the crease on one side through to the other and back and forth and when I pull on the thread it all tightens up. So it makes a nice finish, which is barely visible. And there you can see the top stitching I did around the top edge of the bag. When she's older, if she doesn't want her name to be showing on her library bag, that's fine. It'll work that way. In the meantime, she shouldn't lose this one. See you next time.